Canadians on average are spending about 177% more than the income they're bringing in after taxes, according to Statistics Canada. With Victoria, Vancouver and Toronto topping the charts, these numbers are about 20% higher than they were in two Hello, hello, hello friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Wolo. I want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to this channel and have seen my videos. I would say click on the thumbs up button. Is it thumbs up? Just click on the thumbs up button. And if this is the first time, please subscribe and uh, click on the notification bell. Anytime I upload a video, you'll be the first to know. I share information about life in Canada, immigrating to Canada and everything that's going to be beneficial to anybody that sees my videos. So today is actually something that is very important. Before I start this topic, the weather has been very cold. Yes, for anybody coming to Manitoba this season, today is minus 45 degrees wind chill. It is super cold. So I pity people who are outside. I didn't go anywhere today. So I am indoors. I didn't go anywhere because I didn't want to experience this minus 45 degrees wind chill. That is how Canada is and nobody has died from it yet well nobody has suffered from hypothermia there's something called hypothermia um that's people who expose themselves to extreme cold weather if they get so cold um there's what's called hypothermia and they might die as a result of hypothermia so so far i hope nobody's out there um and i hope everybody's properly dressed for the weather Anyway, that is not the topic for today. The topic for today is actually what happens in Canada and what happens to most immigrants when they come here and um, get themselves into some debt. I won't call it some, I'll say debt, all, for all sorts of debt because we all know that the Western lifestyle is about debt. It's about debt, it's about credit, it's about building your credit history. And while you're trying to build your credit history, you might find yourself going into some form of debt. Some people call some debts good debts. Like if you have a house, some people can say it's a good debt. But uh, some people call some form of debt bad debt. So credit card debt where you um, buy something with your credit card and you're unable to pay within the 21 days limit and it incurs an interest um, rate of like 20% on what you have purchased. Let's say you buy a phone for $100 and you're not able to pay within that 21 days. Um, you'll be paying 21% interest on that $100. So that means you're going to be paying about $121 on top of that phone if you're not able to pay within that 21 days limit. So this kind of consumer debt is what a lot of new immigrants who are not so financially aware or not financially literate enough, they get into this kind of debt and start complaining, oh, there is no money. There is no money in Canada. Everything is bills, 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 bills. And I also want to say this thing that um, a lot of people go beyond their means to buy things that they cannot afford. Number one is buying a house. It is very good to um, get a mortgage, but what should um, do some form of mathematical calculations on what you can afford and the type of house you can afford before you can buy a house. Previously, or uh, in some years back, there was nothing like the mortgage stress test. And that was when people who were earning $50,000 can go and buy a $500,000 house. And then they are sinking in debt, um, thinking of how they can pay their mortgage and pay their other bills. And then they start working 24 hours. So work as much as 18 hours just to get enough money to service the mortgage. So based on that, the government of Canada decided to introduce what you call the mortgage stress test based on the finances of individuals to see what they can afford in terms of housing. Yes, it's good to buy a house because it's an asset, uh, but most times, most immigrants actually go beyond their means in buying houses that they cannot afford. And then at the end of the day, they start complaining. So when you hear people say, oh, there's so much bills in Canada, so much bills. Yes, there are bills. You pay this, you pay that. You pay for mortgage, you pay for insurance, you pay for um, your utility bills, you pay for your vehicle insurance, you pay so many things. But I think a lot of um, issues that has to do with these debts is because a lot of people do not do their financial calculations very well before buying something that they can easily afford. Normally, for someone to buy a house, at least your mortgage that you'll be paying a monthly or bi-weekly should be about 30% of your income. If what you're going to pay for 
um, is more than 30 percent that means you find yourself where you're living from paycheck to paycheck so that's where the word paycheck to paycheck comes in when your salary comes in it means you're using it to service one debt or the other and that is why some people will say africa is better because in africa you don't pay so much bills you have so much money in your account whereas in the western world people do not have money in their account because they are paying so many bills they are paying these bills they are paying that bill they are paying this bill and um, it leads to frustrations and helplessness and anger about the system so this advice is for people who are coming to canada please do not be in a hurry to rush into getting all this consumer debt and mortgage debt do not rush into financing your your financing things that you know you can buy uh, with cash it's better to buy the items you want to buy paying cash than using your credit card yes it's good to use your credit card if you are very financially prudent you can use your credit card to buy what you want and pay off as long as you have the cash but if you know you're not financially prudent please try as much as possible not to go into all this consumer debt because this consumer debt they are very bad and that's why you see people saying they are one million dollars in debt they are five million dollars in debt they are two million dollars in debt and you ask them how come it's because of one consumer item that they might, might have purchased and were unable to pay the debt as at when they were supposed to pay back and then it started compounding in interest and you know when interest compounds like that before you know what is happening a one thousand dollars debt can turn to a ten thousand dollars debt and then you start crying oh i have so many debts and stuff like that so um i personally am a very very financially prudent person i try as much as possible to avoid buying anything in credit it's not it's not if i don't buy in credit i buy in credit but i pay off once i um have purchased that item and some people will want to argue that if you're buying a car it is good to finance the car than just using bulk money to buy a car but i personally i think uh buying a new car the moment you drive it out of the garage it was it's already losing its worth and the value starts depreciating immediately if you want to sell that car you will not sell it at the value you bought it so for vehicles i don't see the reason why somebody should go and start financing a vehicle and at the end of the year or at the end of the day you're paying twice or three times the worth of the vehicle it's better to just buy a second hand vehicle than buying a new vehicle it's my own opinion you can do whatever you want with your money i'm not enforcing my opinion on anybody but i'm just saying that for someone to live a life that you are um, it's very easy to pay your bills you're not under so much pressure you're not doing two jobs or three jobs working 21 hours without rest and looking for ways to pay all the numerous bills because of a house you know so many immigrants are house poor because they cannot afford the house they are living in they just feel that oh the house is an asset at the end of 10 20 years if i sell it i'm going to make so much money out of it but if you do the maths for people who are who are very good at mathematics and economics i am not good at math but i'm good at financial maths anything that has to do with money count me in for people who know how to do maths, by the time you sell off a $500,000 house and pay the broker, pay so many things, pay the taxes around it or whatever, you find out that you've not made any gain. So sometimes I feel even getting a house or getting a mortgage is not an asset. But some people see it as, oh, you're paying yourself because it's a mortgage, it's an asset, you're paying yourself, therefore it's, it's something that is good to invest in. But I do not really see it as an asset. I only see it as an asset where people are paying rent. So the idea is instead of buying this one big house where only you and your spouse and maybe your two children are living in five bedroom house and pose in front of it and say, yes, this is my house. I think it's better to buy a four bedroom apartment block where you can live in one and rent the other three. That's what is financial prudence. Or you buy a duplex where you rent the other one out and live in one. The other person is paying the mortgage and you are living for free. So that's my own advice. That's my own little advice that I, I will have for any new immigrants coming to Canada or those who have already landed in Canada. Do not be in a haste to buy a house that you cannot afford. And another thing I also want to say is this. That it is better to buy on one person's income than a joint income because you don't know what happens life is very funny you don't know what's going to happen today tomorrow or next um if you do a combined income and buy a house that both of you can afford what if the other person loses his job and then you're not you're not able to afford paying the mortgage bills that it becomes burdensome becomes 
a problem another thing people do is they actually leave um, an emergency fund um, maybe six months one year mortgage um, money as an emergency fund just in case they lose their jobs they'll be able to still have that emergency fund to rely on to pay their mortgage because the moment you lose your job and you're not paying your mortgage the bank will take the house from you and all the monies you've been paying into that mortgage for all the years they will not even remember if the money is there if you're smart enough to sell it before they come it's fine you can still make some money out of it but if you're not smart enough the bank can come and take your um, house from you so um what i'm trying to say is people should be financially prudent in canada because the debt level in canada especially consumer debt um, it's at an all-time high it's really really at an all-time high and i personally I don't like living in that kind of debt style, debt lifestyle where you fund everything on debt, travel to Bahamas on debt, travel to Hawaii with your credit card, travel to this and at the end of the day, you can't pay off. So me, I like to tell myself the truth. Anything that is going to stress me out in terms of um, I'm owing one money somewhere or I'm owing somebody one money, I don't like it at all. I'd rather stay in my one corner, my small one room corner and manage myself rather than live in one big house and I will not be sleeping inside the house. And funny enough, that's what most people do. They buy all these big, big houses, $600,000 house, $700,000 house, and they are working 24 hours. They are, not able, they are not able to sleep inside the houses. And it's not, I mean, it doesn't tell on your health, especially if you're working too much because you want to pay a mortgage. It doesn't tell on the person's health at the end of the day. And another thing I also want to mention is this, that the location that you live in also determines a lot. So for people who are living in Toronto, they might remain renters for a long period of time. They will not be able to save enough money to buy a house because the housing market in Toronto is very expensive. But if you come to places like Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, the economy in Alberta is a little bit down, but it's coming up a little bit. If you live in these places, um, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Peace, Prince Edward Island, Newfoundland and Labrador. If you live in all these places, it is much cheaper to own a home and much, much affordable. Although Ontario has um, more jobs, yeah, there are more jobs in Ontario, but the housing market is very, very high. The same thing with British Columbia. The housing market is too much. It's too expensive. But coming down to the places where we have so many cold, like we had minus 45 degrees today, it's super, super cold. Edmonton, Winnipeg, Saskatchewan, um, Saskatoon, Regina, Calgary, Halifax, these places, houses are affordable. And one can live comfortably without working 24 hours of the day just to pay of a mortgage so this is the little advice i have for you today i hope i have not spoken too much and um yeah so before i even round up today a lot of people sent me emails concerning the business investment video i did the last time and i just want to say this that before you start sending me an email please tell me the business you have been running for the past two years because most of the requirements um, that is needed to buy a business an existing business in canada is that you must have been running your own business um, back where you are because it will help facilitate a lot of things especially when the immigration officers are requesting for documents to show that yes you can run a business those things can help so if you are sending me an email please mention the business that you're into so that i can help you um in the research and please you know i'm doing this thing pro bono i'm not asking anybody for money it's not easy to start researching for people i crave your indulgence please give me time I will try as much as possible to do all this research and also create a video on them so that it can be beneficial to everybody. I have spoken too much. I don't want to TikTok too much. Okay, so thank you so much for watching and don't go into debt if you eventually come to Canada. It's not a good lifestyle. And there's one thing I also need to say. I follow Dave Ramsey. Um, anybody who knows Dave Ramsey, he's based in the US, but I follow him and i learn from him i take enough guidance from him when it comes to finances and spending your money and not going to debt so thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video bye bye